Okay, now this video continues from the previous one. We'll just recap a little bit on level 8. The first type of question is a straight out substitution. You want to think and say, and say aloud to yourself the progressive total. So you look at x and you look over here to 24 and you say 24. You look at y, look over here, and you know you're taking away y, so you just say 17, you're down to 17, and likewise for z. Order of operations, it's important to do the thing within the brackets first. Just think of that as a negative 15. And you'll be taking away another negative 15. Think of going further down into the negatives, down to negative 30. In a sequence like this, you're looking for the average between the two figures on either side. If you can see that it appears to be going up or down by an equal amount with each thing, it's called an arithmetic progression. So you can add 4.3 and 5.1 and that gives you 9.4 and you can divide that by 2 to get 4.7. So you go 3.9, 4.3, up by 0.4 to 4.7, up by another 0.4 to 5.1. With these sort of things you think, well, when I'm converting metres to centimetres, there's two zeros involved because a centimetre is a hundredth, think of cent. And so, you know, you've got two decimal places involved if it was just metres to centimetres, but this is a cubic one. So you multiply your two decimal places by three, giving you six decimal places. And so you will move it back six decimal places two, three, four, five, six, and put in your 1.5. Down here, the important thing is to look at where the question mark is. Now the question mark is outside the bracket, so you can use it for either the first or the last. You only got to look at one of them. We don't have to check both. You just have to think, well, what times 7 equals 63? When you're talking about volume, if you have a cross-sectional area and you multiply that by a height, that will give you the volume. If you have a rectangle, of course, as you know, you just simply multiply the length by the breadth. But if it's a triangle, you'll take half of that. And it's easier, if you can see that one of the numbers is an even number, it's easier to take half of that even number first and then do your multiplication. With repeating decimals, they like to ask you about things like 0.8888, and that of course is 8 ninths. You can check these things on a calculator. The other ones you need to know would be 0.3333, which is a third, and 0.6666 and so on, so two thirds. Other more complicated decimals, you probably won't be asked in this sort of thing. So let's move on now to level nine. Here we have slightly more complicated calculations with x, y's and z's. These often take longer than some of the other questions. If you're very confident that you can get other questions right, you might pass on this by very, very quickly just typing a zero and, and moving on and deliberately getting it wrong. But um, if you're fairly proficient at it or you're not too confident about getting all your other questions right, have a go at it, especially if you've already made some wrong answers. Now with this sort of thing, Again, you've got a factor outside. You only have to look at one of them. So you only have to consider, well, 5 times 3x gives me 15x. You don't have to check both. I mean, of course, it'll be right that 5 times negative 5 will be negative 25. But you just remember that the x's are all separate from the m's. With these things, just remember to do your multiplication first or your division first and in situations like this where you're multiplying by negative 7 and you're dividing by negative 7 of course that's just going to cancel out so all that part there is just 11. Now here you're asked for the last thing you're looking for the constant term at the end so all you have to look at is the last figure in here and what's outside the bracket 
So it's just a matter of 3 times 3 equals 9. There's no need to look at the x's when you're looking for the last thing. So have a look at the question mark. If you're looking for the last, look only at the last within the brackets. Calculating midpoints. Another similar shortcut here is to focus on what you're being asked. The question mark relates to the y value, the second value in the brackets. So you've only got to look at the second values, the negative 12 and the negative 16. Now you can probably pretty easily see that the midpoint of that is negative 14. If you can easily see that the difference between two numbers is an even number, then you just simply take half of that and, and move by that distance from one of those numbers to get into the middle. But if the numbers are such that you've got a negative one and a positive one, it's often better to do the subtraction to get the, the overall total, making sure you, you note whether it's a negative total or a positive total, depending on which one's the bigger, and then halve that to get the average. So you get your average or your midpoint by adding the two values and dividing by two, but sometimes you can spot a quicker way of doing it if you can easily see what the difference is between the two numbers and take half of that. Now we come to Pythagoras' theorem and the fact that the hypotenuse of a right angled triangle can be determined from the other two sides. You square each of the other two sides and you add them together and you take the square root. But you don't have to go through those calculations if you remember the standard Pythagorean triads as they're called. Now you may want to write these down. The simplest one is 3, 4, 5, and that's because 3 squared, 9, plus 4 squared, 16, equals 25, which is 5 squared. The next one to remember is 5, 12, 13. And then we have 7, 24, 25. And we have 8, 15, 17. And we have 9, 40, 41. Now you may well be asked for multiples of those. Here is a straightforward one where we've just simply got 8, 15 and therefore the answer is 17. But in another question they might well ask you something like three times each of those figures. They might ask you 24, 45. So then you need 3 times the 17, which is 51 as your answer for the hypotenuse. So the first thing to look at is the, the first number there and see what it is a multiple of and go back and think about your Pythagorean triangles and the triads. So if the first number is for example 15 it's probably a multiple of, of the 5 there. You've no doubt got the 5, 12, 13 triangles so it might have in the actual question it might have 15 and then it might have, well, you work it out. 5 times 3 is 15. The next one is 12. So 12 times 3 is 36. So they will give you the 36. But what you're looking for is the 3 times 13. 39 is the answer. So you understand if we have 5, 12, 13, we might have 3 times each of those figures. 15, 36, 39. So you have to spot it by looking at the first number and seeing what it is a multiple of and that should guide you into thinking about which of the triads you need to use. But you will need to remember those triads. Now when you're talking about points moving like this, here we have a situation where again you only have to look at one aspect of the question. We're looking for the, the y value. Now the y value has to do with going up and down. So you don't have to worry about reading about the thing about four units to right. To the right all you have to read is ten units up. So all you have to do is go to your y value over here nine and add ten to get nineteen. But of course if they were looking for the x value you'd be looking in the information about how many units right or left it went 
and if it went right of course you would be adding to the original x value and the left you'd be taking away from it. These ones are quite straightforward but they're talking about just selecting one out of these various um, cards so you've got green and black and pink so you've got just three outcomes you could just basically um, see that one quite quickly. This is just testing your knowledge of, of powers of numbers so that you must recognise that if you've got five a's all multiplied together it will be a raised to the fifth power. The n there, the small n superscript will be five. Now in scientific notation we write scientific notation with one digit, then a decimal, and then a certain number of figures in the decimal places. And so what you have to do is see how many decimal places you need to move the decimal point, how many places you need to move it to get it such that the decimal point comes after the first whole figure. So here you can see we're going at 1 and then 2 to put it between the 2 and the 0. Now, in general, if it's a small number like that, the index is going to be negative 2. Because, in fact, we've moved the decimal point that way. We've effectively multiplied by 100, and an index of negative 2 is equivalent to dividing by 100. But if you just simply remember, small numbers have negative indexes, and large ones have positive indexes, and you just have to work out how many decimal places you have to actually move the decimal point in order to make it come just after the first digit. Let's look at level 10 then.